and really the rest of my time with you is to talk about, okay, how do we go about staging a more compelling experience as an enabler for the transformations that, in fact, are the business that you're in? You're charging for the change. All right, so let's talk about how to do that. The, and three basic uh, principles or frameworks that we'll go through uh, the, to assist you in this regard. And the first is taken by this wonderful book that uh, I discovered in the course of writing our own book, Fodor's Adventures to Imagine, Thrilling Escapes in North America. Fodor's The Travel People commissioned this brilliant photojournalist, uh, Peter Gutman, to go to some 27 different outdoor-based adventures in North America, photograph them, write an essay about each one, and I'm going to turn to the table of contents, as I did the day I discovered this book, and I'm going to read to you the names of the chapters for these 27 some adventure-based experiences. And there's even a, a directory at the back where you can look up the name of an enterprise you can contact to buy each of these experiences. And as I read through the chapter names, I would like you to listen for the similarity in the chapter names. In fact, listen for the similarity in the very structure of the words, because that similarity, that is the very first principle of thinking more richly about experience staging. Here we go. You ready? Houseboating, portaging, mountain biking, cattle driving roundups, Olympic bobsledding, tall ship sailing, tornado chasing, canyoneering, wagon train pioneering, harp seal viewing, iceberg tracking, puffin birding, race car driving, hot air ballooning, climbing, spelunking, whitewater rafting, canoeing swamp trails, gila hiking, hiking hut to hut, well kissing, llama trekking, open cockpit barnstorming, land yachting, reenacting historic battles, ice boating, encountering polar bears, and dog sledding. Now what do they all have in common? And ING, indeed. So here's the first principle. You need to ing the thing. It is the using of a good or service that is the experience. And in English, the words that we use for experiences end in ING. Dog sledding, golfing, walking, eating, dining, sleeping. Right? Experiences are expressed in terms of ING words. Gerunds for any old English majors. So you need to start thinking in terms of ING words. So let me share some examples of some ing things, and I'm going to give you a specific technique to ing the thing. Right, here's some examples. Joan Soda has inged the thing. Saddle-based company. Their labeling has been inged by allowing customers photographing things to submit them to the company. Like here's all the different flavors of, of Joan Soda. My favorite flavor is green apple soda, upper left. These two different labels from uh, Joan Soda, both photographs, like all photographs on every bottle of Joan Soda, photographs taken by their actual customers. Because they started this company realizing that digital photography is now ubiquitous. Right, because people travel with their cameras everywhere. So what happens with Joan Soda, if you go to their website, they have their photo gallery. Last time I checked, over 400,000 photographs posted by their customers right, of, di of different photographs, and then you can vote on which photographs you like best, and then periodically they will have, uh, they'll, they'll take actual photographs submitted, the ones that get the most votes, and put it into actual production. Right? They've inged the labeling of their offering at Joan Soda. Right? So, people are calling this social networking. Right, the customers are doing the work. They're participating. Now they've taken this capability for their main manufacturing processes, and now they're offering it to the public on their website, where you can submit a photograph and buy a 12-pack of Jones Soda for the photograph that you send in. And by the way, at $3.95 a 12-pack, you know, that's cheaper than an 8-ounce Coke at the Desperation Bar you know, here at the Venetian. <laughs> it's not a bad price point. Maybe right? it's premium. I look at this and go, you know, you're looking for memorabilia for your corrective eye surgery. Why not? Send them a 12-pack when you're, when you're done. Right? But again, the main purpose here is this ing thing. Right? There's no traditional functional reason for this in terms of traditional functionality. All right, now let's look at, that's consumer perishable. Let's look at consumer durable. Um, Steinway and Sons. What's the obvious ING word for uh, piano? 
piano playing. Right? They've taken the obvious word. Here's what Stanley and Sons now does occasionally uh, for promotional periods with their high-end piano, $600,000 piano. They, when you buy this $100,000 piano, you get with it a piano playing experience. They will have an accomplished pianist come to your home, and they'll take, Simon will take care of everything. They'll invite 12 other couples to come to your home. They'll send out the invitations. Steinway and Sons cordially invites you to the home of Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. They'll hire the valet parking, the catering. The person who told me about this at the time was the head of retail banking for Fleet Boston. And he said because of the piano playing experience in his home, two other couples decided to buy a piano. Right? The experience is the marketing. So you have certain people, when they get their vision corrected, what's the obvious ING experience that perhaps you ought to couple with that? Right? So they can then become a, a, give them a better experience for which them to tell other people about your offerings. Um, and in your own industry, there's some mean things. Right? You can now get, for no traditional functional reason, contact lenses for your favorite NFL team. You know, if somebody has, has perfect vision, doesn't need it for corrective purposes, you're starting to see emerge this kind of thing, right? Raiders fans, you know, just out in the, out in the stands with their, their eyewear, right? So you've got ink thing, indeed, in your own industry. Well, real thing we want to get to, of course, is how do you start thinking about this for yourself? So let me give you a very simple technique for inging the thing. On your own, take a piece of paper or with your staff in the, in the office, Get a flip chart, whatever it takes, and divide it down the middle. And on the left-hand side, write down all of the ING words that are already in your vocabulary. Exhaustively. Write them all down. Because you have ING words, an abundance of them, in your business already today. And write them all down. And then the right-hand side, make up some new words. Like Peter Gutman's puffin burning. Like zorbing. Right, take some nouns and force some ING words or play around with, with nouns and verb combinations, but just playfully, left brain, right brain, existing words, and get an equal number of made-up words. And don't even worry about what they mean. Just get a long list of made-up words that you just imagine you just make up. And here's what you, you're searching for. On the left-hand side, you want to ask yourself, what existing ING word is being neglected as an experience? Like piano playing for Steinway. You have some ING word as an industry, as an individual business, that's being ignored, is being neglected as an experience that you need to stage in a more compelling way. And on the right-hand side, what new ING word might suggest some great new experience?